Hello there, kia ora. There should be some headlines that come as no big shock to the world. The story on New Year's Day about the first baby born in the country. The annual dude who waited outside for a couple of hours in front of his store to buy an iPhone when it's first released. The annual best pie contest winner or some rich white dude with links to a political party getting ongoing name suppression. They're all staples of our media. But there's other headlines which some people seem to be genuinely shocked by this week where they really shouldn't be. Like this one. The number of people who are homeless in Wellington is the worst that it's been in decades. After Associate Housing Minister Tama Portaka announced huge reductions in emergency housing numbers and answered a follow-up question from the media with, I don't know where 30% of them have gone, well, this headline was what people expected to happen. It was telegraphed by the opposition parties, by social groups like social welfare organisations, housing organisations, that this was going to be the outcome of that particular comment. So it shouldn't be a surprise when it is. Or the fact that some people feel that Christopher Luxon is a little out of touch. Over half of the country, apparently. And some people are genuinely shocked by the fact that Mr. I get it, I'm rich, I'm sorted. Mr. I own several rental properties and I won't discuss lowering the rent on them because of the downward pressure I claimed was going to lower rents, but I will sell some of them to make untaxed capital gains after I move the Brightline test and my properties fall outside of that. Well, the mister, yes, I claimed the clean car discount, then got rid of it because apparently it was upsetting farmers. Mr. crossed the road in a limo to say he was a man of the people. Mr. it cost me $60 a week for groceries. Mr. well, I'm entitled to housing entitlements and it's not about the friggin' targets. The Prime Minister who spent more time overseas than he has in Dunedin since being elected, yeah, he's seen by a few people as being out of touch. Oh, hey, quick footnote. When I was doing research for this piece and going through the TVNZ Twitter account where they put this story out, the right-wingers who were like, nope, don't believe it, fake news, every single one of them that had a publicly facing profile with content you could actually check out was filled with alt-right disinformation and outright hateful bigotry. Make of that what you will. When controversy happened around the Human Rights and Race Relations Commissioner choices, roles which should be filled out by someone with no publicly accessible skeletons in their closet, it was no surprise to find a headline later that, well, something smelled dodgy in the application process. It turns out Paul Goldsmith went for the applicant who was seen as the least appropriate one for the job by the independent panel of experts hired to vet the candidates. And one of the other candidates, the one who got the job, was added later at his request. Which sounds problematic when you realise that that particular candidate helped raise funds for alt-right grifters to come over here and start telling people about the Great Replacement Theory. When this government starts making noises about English first and making it an official language to vice signal to voters, it should come as no shock that you see headlines where that's being implemented in public services in ways which could be detrimental in the long run to some patients with limited English skills or the deaf. Now, there's a number of reasons why these shouldn't have been surprising headlines. Some are cases of history repeating itself. We saw under the key government, after all, an increase in homelessness due to punitive welfare policies and a housing crisis. We've seen so much effort going into make Luxon likeable with his social media output, and yet he's consistently polled poorly in personal ratings since before the election. That's a sure sign people feel he's out of touch. In the past, Paul Goldsmith has been known to make decisions to promote questionable people. Just take a look at his hagiography of Don Brash, paid for as an election campaign tool to make Brash look good. And just look into the research on how political figures spouting their ideologies from far-flung corners of political discourse emboldens others to do the same. And how a clearly fractured organisation that's not communicating well causes problems, like the messaging from Waikato Hospital, and the muddled reactions to smooth it over. So why do we keep repeating these things? And why are people still shocked by them? Well, one's actually a form of confirmation bias. For those that voted for this government, it can be really hard to accept that the people you voted for have issues. And that's something that happens no matter who you vote for, and voters across the political spectrum do it all the time. It is, after all, kind of interesting, though, that the percentage of people who feel Luxon is hip and with it, is almost identical to the number of people who would vote for National in the same poll. Another is around media coverage. Even when it's negative, just having a lot of coverage can help give the impression of competence to those whose bias won't let them see any criticism as negative. 
But this government is also really selective about the media it interacts with. They'll happily go on News Talk, where Barry Soper will tell people the left are mean to him because he's rich, and our mainstream media tend to lean a bit right. But not one member of the coalition has been seen on left-wing alternative media to explain their perspectives. Hey, if there's any coalition MPs watching this on the DL, well, we did actually send most of you invites to come join us on our Friday night shows. Like, 98% of you. There's like two people that I won't ever have on my show. They know who they are. They know what they did. And I might add Simon Watts to that list because apparently he doesn't like my shirts. They're far too bright. But the invites are sitting there in your inbox if you'd like to change your mind and come and join us so we can see your perspective on things. I think it'd be really awesome for the audience to hear from you directly. They're in your inbox now. Anyway, let me get back to this. Or possibly it's down to that old adage that those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And since the study of history is a humanities topic, it's not the focus of right-wing governments. So the cycle's just going to keep on going. Wait, we're still here. It's over. Find another video.